Hi, this is Mr. McGovern. Um, I made this video on how I would study for an upcoming physics or chemistry end of year or benchmark exam. And I've made this video because a couple of my students have watched the other videos that I've made on parts of physics and they've said something like, Sir, I watched your videos the other night before the exam, but I still failed. Now, my point to that is that you watch me do physics, right? Just because you can see me doing physics doesn't mean that you can do it yourself. You need to be able to practice doing physics in order to pass a physics exam. It's one thing for me to watch someone skateboarding, it's another thing for me to skateboard myself. Okay, they're two different things. So this video is about how I would study for a physics or chemistry exam. So two are very similar. And this method can be used for any sort of high school exam or university sort of physics exam. It's not the only method, but it's the method that I would use and it's the method I promote and it's certainly um, if I had to go back in time to high school I'd use it again. So I would study using a three-step method. You do some prep, you then go on to do the mahi, and then there's some fine-tuning. I'll go into each of these steps in a second. And then I'll also look at some other tips about how much time you take and some things about that, like a Pomodoro timer. So prep, this is the easiest one. You've got to make sure that you've got a, a complete set of notes. So this could only take you maybe a day or two, making sure everything's there. So your complete set of notes means that you've got the notes in your book. You might need to fill in some gaps for some friends. Um, the notes can exist in your textbooks, so something like the SciPad has the notes at the start of each um, section. Or your notes could be, hey, I'm going to rely on the videos that Mr. McGovern made online. All right? So I'm not asking you to go through and highlight all your notes or rewrite your notes or watch all these videos for now. You've already done that learning to some degree in class. I want you to make sure you've got them there as a resource that you can fall back on when we get to the next step. You also need as part of your prep um, access to exam or exam style questions. So you could look up um, NCA exams, you can find them online for free. Okay, I do that all the time. Um, something like uh, the, the website No Brain Too Small, if you just Google No Brain Too Small, it's a great website because it has all the exam questions for physics, chemistry and bio and it um, puts them in order of um, topic. So sometimes you just want to work on one topic at a time. It has all the exam questions from many years by topic, so I like that site for that. I also like um, the AME style workbooks. I like them because I can just work in the book without the distraction of being on my computer. Often, even when I'm studying, I'll put the computer on and, and work on an exam question, but then just accidentally end up on um, a news website or YouTube or you know Facebook or something like that. So it's great maybe to have it in a workbook, then you don't have any distractions. Either of these work, um, whatever works for you. All right, the first step was just getting everything. Now you've actually got to practice doing the physics. This is doing the mahi. What does that involve? Well, once you've got these exam questions, you need to answer one of the questions, just one, not A and, and B at the same time. Just do A for a start, and then you need to check the answer for that question. So if you've looked up the NCA exam, you will also have to look up the NCA exam answers. If you've got um, a book, like the AME book, the answers are in the back. Just one question at a time, then check that answer. One of three things can happen when you finish that question and you check the answer. Right? You have no idea. So if you couldn't know how to start it, or you started it and it was completely wrong, you've had looked at the answers, it still doesn't make any sense at all. You need to stop, okay? And you need to find that area in your notes and you need to spend some time learning it. So that means you might go back to your notes, that means you might go back and find the videos on this and watch the videos on this area of physics. If you don't know what area of physics it is, you need to put a star beside that question and ask your teacher the next day and say, Sir, I couldn't do this question. What area of physics is it? So I can go back and learn it. You could answer the question and um, you got it wrong, but from the answers you can kind of reverse engineer the idea. right? You look at the answers and say, mm, I think that makes sense. I think I can do that. If that's the case, don't just stop there. After looking at the answers, do the question again. Can you do that question independently now that you've seen the right way to do it? If you can, you can move on. If you can't, you might need to practice that again. And the third outcome is when you go to do a question, you can get it right. You check the answers, it's right. Okay. Don't just straight away move on. Maybe just slowly look at the answers and say, hey, are there any steps or keywords that I've missed out or I can improve my answer? Right. So if you're getting questions right, you're probably at a merit level at least. If you want to go for an excellence level, you've got to get all these details right. So you've got to spend some time making sure you haven't missed anything. So that's the three outcomes you get when you answer questions 
when you're doing the mahi. And now you know what to do if you get any of these points. Once you've finished doing the mahi, and that's majority of the time, I'd say 80% of the time of study is doing the mahi, you can do some fine tuning. That requires you to answer exam questions similar to what you did before, but instead of stopping after every single question, after 1A and after 1B and after 1C, you only go to the um, answers once you've finished the whole paper. Okay, because you need to check you got it right, but now you're kind of practicing under exam conditions without the help of the answers. Maybe as well, if you're really aiming for top marks, you might finish it, check the answers, and ask your teacher to have a quick look over it and see if there's any improvements you can make, any details you can do to get from that merit to that excellence level. So other tips. Time. How much time do you need to spend studying? Okay, Physics is difficult, and so is chemistry, I guess, if you're studying for that. It does take time. Right? So you can't just expect to do this you know, two, three days out from the, the, the final exam. There's so many scientific studies that show that if you spread it over weeks, it means it solidifies um, your understanding in your long-term memory. That ends up being better for your exam and better for remembering this stuff for when you have to learn it again next year when you go on to level three or next year when you go on to health science or university. Um, doing the same amount of study spread out over many weeks is so much better than doing the same amount of study crammed into the day before. I can't stress that enough. So how much time would I take? As a minimum, I would do one month out from exams. And I'm not saying you have to do three hours every night of physics. I would do a couple of nights a week for half an hour. Okay, if you're really serious about wanting to improve, you've got to do the mahi, you've got to do the work, you've got to plan and start early enough. Um, you know what to do now because of this video, you've just got to do it. Another tip is a Pomodoro timer. I like this, which is, um, you can find apps for this for free, you can find just online websites. It's just a timer that says you do 25 minutes of study once you've done 25 minutes of study, it says ding, and you have five minutes of break. I go to the fridge, I have something to eat, I quickly look on my phone, see if I've got any messages, then I go back to do some more study. The last thing is, when you start out, it starts tough, right? Especially if you're um, having a go at the questions and, and you've got no idea. It's very, very off-putting. However, you've just got to believe that it's going to get easier. As you get better at these questions, you're going to get faster at the process, right? Not only are you going to get faster in the process, it's going to get more satisfying. As you get things right, your brain's going to give you little shots of dopamine and you're going to start enjoying study as well. So just believe me, if it starts out hard, stick with it and it does get better and better and easier and easier and more and more satisfying. So in summary, right, this is a three-step method. You've got to do a little bit of prep for a couple of days, making sure you've got all the notes and you've got a, um, access to questions. There's a couple of ways I've said that you can get access to questions. The main chunk of time you're doing the mahi, which is you are answering the questions, checking your answers. You have th three situations here. You have no idea about the question. You can reverse engineer the answer or you got it right. Okay, Each of those had a point you needed to look at, and then we can do some fine tuning. There were some other tips we looked at, which how much time you need to spend, the Pomodoro timer, and the fact that it gets easier. I will put a link in the description of this video for a cheat sheet of everything I've talked about, so you can print it and put it on the wall. Um, so you know exactly what you're doing when you're studying and also a link to my level 2 and level 3 um, library of physics YouTube videos. I hope this is helpful. Good luck for your exams uh, and enjoy yourselves.